Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Today I'm building a device that I should have built a long time ago, probably before I built my first antenna. And it's a device that anybody who's building antennas really should have. And I can't believe I haven't built one yet. It is called, of course, a field strength meter. It allows you to measure the electric field of an antenna and see its radiating pattern. Also, it's really useful for uh, comparing two antennas, for instance, because you can, at a distance, see if the antenna is radiating properly and which antenna is radiating better than the other one. It requires very few components to build, just a little plastic box. Here we have a view meter. It's upside down here, but it's 250 microamps. A couple diodes, those are 1N34A and those are Chotky diodes, so germanium diodes, because they have a reverse voltage of 0.2 volts instead of 0.6 volts, so uh, more sensitive. We have a 47 nanofarad capacitor, and here we have two other capacitors. We have a 10 nanofarad and a 470 picofarad, so uh, one of these two, I don't know which is what. <laughs> also, we have here a uh, 250 kilo ohm potentiometer so linear and uh, that's it i don't remember where i found this uh, schematic uh, i have so many schematics and the uh, files that uh, i don't remember where i got it but it's very simple it's very well known a uh, couple diodes it's a rectifier uh, a few capacitors and potentiometer and the uh, micro amp meter so uh, you can freeze that and uh, make a screenshot and uh, let's move on. And this device doesn't even require a battery. It will simply take the uh, RF uh, current, you know, uh, coming from a little piece of wire or an antenna, a short antenna, rectify it and send the current to the uh, meter here, which will allow us to see the uh, strength of the electric field of the antenna. Now, you can see here the graduation goes from uh, 0 to 5, but it really doesn't matter. It's just uh, to compare one antenna to another or uh, the radiation of the antenna from one direction to another. Most of the work is actually going to be drilling the box. And this meter here will come actually here. And it's just the right size. Just it, And this just happened. I, I didn't plan it like that, but... Uh, it just happens to fit perfectly and the potentiometer, hopefully I'll have enough space to put it here. So I'm going to take my measurements here and drill my box. I just need to make a round hole uh, for this to go through and that's it. So it's about uh, 20.75 from the edge. All right, I'm going to mark that. So that will be the top of the hole. And let's say uh, 22 millimeters uh, diameter. It doesn't matter if it's a little bigger hole because of course it's going to be hidden by the uh, the plastic here. This is going to go like this in the box. I just happen to have a coin here that's about the same diameter so I'll just trace around it. Of course black on black that's not the best but the marker is a bit shiny so I'll be able to see it. And that is a hole. First I'm going to drill the, uh, the center hole. And those boxes are very fragile, as you may have seen in my video about the uh, Ununs. Uh, this is a cheap plastic box from eBay and it's really crappy. I have a step drill bit here, but I'm worried about it. Uh, even that might be a little bit too much at a time, but uh, I'll try not to break it. Look, it doesn't look uh, very centered to me. Well, at least it's centered this way. Not like that, so that's not too much of a problem. All right, I think I got it right. Um, looks okay. Now I need to file a bit of the side of the hole here for uh, this little bump here and the uh, contacts on this side. I'm just going to use a round file here and I'll spare you the agony of <laughs> going through this. I'll just do this little quick. All right, well, I'd say I did pretty good. I wanted it to be uh, closer to the top here, so uh, I missed by uh, about three millimeters, but on this side, it's perfect. Now I'll drill the hole for the, uh, for the potentiometer. 
and I think I'm going to put a, a BNC on top. It's really not necessary, but um, you know, it'll look nice. And this time I'll do it just a little bit at a time. Live and learn. Oof. Almost broke it. Might have. Might be a little. Ah, uh, oh, there's a crack there. Down. I'll try to fix it anyway. Well, I was successful for the BNC, but uh, I cracked it uh, for the potentiometer. But I'm still going to try to make it uh, look all right. This with will probably hide a bit of it. And uh, the potentiometer with the screw. And maybe I can put something here to hide this piece here. Uh, I'm going to epoxy the whole thing inside after, but uh, still, uh, that's, that's a bummer. Those plastic boxes are really, really bad. I'll never buy them again. So I put a bit of uh, masking tape here to uh, plug the hole and I'm going to epoxy it from the other side. So hopefully that will mask the hole and then I'll just uh, put some black marker there and it won't be visible, but darn, I should have used a Hammond case or you know something better anyway. I don't think I have much left, but I think I have enough to glue the, the meter on and that will do. And of course I just ruined a pair of good pants with some epoxy. Guys, I'm just messing up here. Um, this is just not a good job. This is not my usual level of uh, care and precision, that's for sure. Let's put the meter on. I'll tape that together. And I want to plug that hole in the middle, so hopefully that's still... Oh, the epoxy is already setting. Uh, too late too late it's already uh, it's already hardened i have to make a little more for the for the hole here all right i didn't do this on camera because uh, the epoxy was setting too fast but uh, i practically plugged the hole here but i'm going to use more epoxy later i have uh, another i have two big bottles and uh, uh, this will work but um, i guess it looks all right could have been better all right we're going to move on with the electronics you can see uh, the, uh, the meter here in the box, the BNC I just added, and the uh, potentiometer. And on the other side, you can see I added the button. And I have to say, it looks kind of cute. I mean, I like it. Um, now we have to put the components in, and that should be uh, very simple. I'll start with the uh, 47 nanofarad capacitor, and I'm going to solder that on the BNC. One of the diodes is going to be soldered onto that and uh, be careful of the polarity here like so center of the bnc and the other side to the ground the second diode will be attached uh, soldered to the first one here and i'll just solder that the other side of the diode is uh, soldered to the uh, potentiometer on, on one side now, I might have to revert this later uh, if it's not turning the way I prefer, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Here, I will solder the uh, 47 picofarad capacitor to the uh, two tabs, the opposite tabs of the potentiometer. And you notice that I put some uh, masking tape there, and that's because I'm going to be filling the case later with epoxy, and I don't want the epoxy to uh, prevent the potentiometer from turning. Our 10 nanofarad capacitor is going to go between the contacts of the, uh, the, the micro amp meter. I'll just uh, solder it like this. The center of the potentiometer is going to be soldered to the plus of the meter. And finally, I'm going to solder our common ground here, which I take at the, uh, the ground of the BNC. But again, you don't need to have a BNC could just be a piece of wire, maybe a one foot piece of wire or, or one of those little uh, telescopic antennas. But I prefer BNC because uh, the telescopic antennas, they, uh, they tend to break. So uh, a BNC, I just can't put anything I want on it. And I'll probably use a little uh, rubber ducky, or some, some, spare, uh, some spare two meter rubber ducky that I have somewhere. That should do it. Tug on it a bit, okay. And I think that's about it. I'll double check on the uh, schematic once again and uh, make sure that uh, everything's okay. So what do you guys think? Pretty nifty, huh? With the little rubber ducky there. Looks uh, pretty, uh, 
pretty nice. I have this uh, little retavis here on UHF, and look when I press the uh, the button, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. I can get it to um, to show less because of course it's it's probably too close. Yeah, it's pretty. It just floors it basically. Ah, there we go. Oh, yep, pretty sensitive. Very nice. Very happy about it. All right, so actually I soldered the, the diode on the other side of the potentiometer because I wanted the uh, needle to go up when I turned the potentiometer clockwise. And I forgot to, actually I forgot to connect the ground here to uh, to the other side of the potentiometer, but uh, I guess it still worked without it. But I'll just connect this ground and uh, that'll be it. That's it, it's done. Awesome. So you can see here, I'll hold the, uh, Retavis here, press the button, and with the potentiometer I can set the needle where I want it. Now let's say I had another radio to compare or a different antenna, I simply would leave that like this, try the new antenna, and bingo, I would know if the needle would go further or, or not, and that would give me a good in indication of the, the strength of the electric field. And that's how you compare two antennas. I can't believe I haven't built one before. That's just, that was just dumb. Uh, this is so useful, incredibly useful. All right, so now I'll fill the case with epoxy uh, to make the case stronger. Uh, and also, uh, well, it doesn't need any batteries, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, I'll fill the box with epoxy now. Uh, I'll pot it, basically. And uh, I know that, uh, well, there are very little chance that I need to get back in there, except if it diode fried uh, by a, you know, too much current, but I guess I'll have to take precautions. But uh, this case being what it is, uh, I'd be more confident if everything was uh, potted into uh, epoxy. All right, guys, I'm going to sacrifice a cup for you. <laughs> Of course, I should have put something on my table. I just can't be trusted with the boxy guys. Just, I just can't. You can't let me do it. Well, guys, I totally ruined it. I ruined a perfectly good device by putting epoxy in the case. And what happened is that uh, epoxy got inside the meter. And of course... Uh, now the needle can go back. Ah, it's just, I can't believe how stupid that was and how stupid I was to do that. And I just, I mean, I'm just out a few dollars, but and, and the frustration. What can I say? I do dumb things. I already ordered a uh, new meter, uh, military grade, a very nice, a very nice case. And I will uh, build a new one, of course, because uh, again, it's a very useful device and uh, I can't believe uh, I have been <laughs> building antennas without one. I think I really need a haircut. By the way, my uh, micro amp meter uh, was a 50 micro amp meter. The schematic calls for a 250 micro amp and the new one I ordered is a 100 micro amp uh, meter. I think 50 is good for QRP, maybe up to five watts. Uh, 250 that might be a bit much uh, I don't use much power maximum is me 20 30 watts maximum 50 on a VHF on 6 meter with my uh, Rakal uh, VRM 5080 so I think a hundred microamp uh, for me is a good uh, is a good value so until next time have a good one